And let me tell you, it's up to God when I live and when I die. It's up to God when we leave this world. The, the devil cannot steal your soul. The devil does not decide your life or death. You are in the hands of the Almighty God. Your name is in His hand, says in Isaiah. You're sealed by His blood and your soul belongs to Him. And you cannot be possessed by Satan. You cannot be destroyed by Satan. You cannot be defeated by the world. There is not one human being that can get the best of you because you have the best in you. And His name is Jesus Christ. Do not be disappointed when people betray you. Expect it. It's going to happen. Do not be disappointed when things don't turn out as, you're, as you planned because God has a better plan. Every time I have the privilege to speak there at the crowd at the Great Passion Play, I share this story. I say, at the end of 2012, the Great Passion Play closed its doors sold all the animals, let all the employees go, and was going into bank foreclosure. And so they even celebrated the final performance of the Great Passion Play and had a huge crowd, and it was in all the papers and on all the television stations and radio stations. Great Passion Play, America's number one outdoor drama, closes forever. And that was the plan, but that was Satan's plan, and God had a better plan. And I want to tell you, it's the very same way for this little church out in the middle of nowhere, where there's not even a town, and many of you drive for many, many miles to come to this church. Some of you drive 10 minutes, some 30 minutes, some even drive an hour and a half to come to this church on Sundays. And I'll tell you right now, it's not because of Randall Christie. It's because of Almighty God. It's because of the Holy Spirit of God. It's because God works things through this church, and we're drawn here because of the power of the blood. We come together in this house because we are of like mind and one purpose. We want to see thousands, even millions, come to know the Lord. And God wants to do that through us. In Isaiah 53, we're going to ask you to turn to Isaiah 53. Who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Our report is that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. And He will give you another chance. And He will save you in the midst of danger. And He will save your soul from hell. And He is coming again to this earth. He will come and get you when it's your time. Who has believed our report of these things? Who believes it today? Who in this room this morning believes that Jesus Christ really is the Son of God? He's the King of kings. He has a plan for your life. And it's so easy to mess it up. But He'll give you another chance. Then the next scripture begins to talk about Jesus Christ. Actually, the arm of the Lord is Jesus Christ. The arm of the Lord is Jesus Christ. And the next verse describes it. Verse 2. He will grow up as a tender plant. As a root out of dry ground. He has no particular comeliness or charismatic attraction, if you want to put it that way in today's terms. He, in other words, he wasn't some rock star that people just flocked to. He 
was Jesus Christ. He was the arm of the Lord. He was the love of God. He was the one that God people were drawn to because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Does anybody know what I'm talking about when I talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God? The anointing of God, that's where the power is, right? You know, I, I'm thankful that so many people by the millions this week were watching as the Pope came to the United States. I'm very thankful for that, and I'm not going to be little to put that down in any way, shape, or form, but I want to tell you what I'd like to see. I'd like to see millions and millions of people drawn to the almighty anointing of Jesus Christ on the United States of America. The anointing of God poured out. The Bible says the angels flew over and they had vials or bowls of oil of God's blessing and they poured it out upon all nations. And they cried out, Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. And the whole world today hears that ring through satellites and internet and TV and radio and in churches all around the world. People like never before should realize we're in the middle of a dangerous situation. We're in the middle of oncoming traffic. We're in the middle of life threatening and it's threatening our entire civilization and culture. And we need Jesus like never before. He's the arm of the Lord. You know, when your kids are little bitty, they like to hang on to your arm, you know, and you pick them up. And they like to do that. And they get about a little bit bigger and it gets a little harder to do that. Then we start saying, go let mama do it. When I think about the arm of the Lord, I think about that. How I want to hold on to the strength of Almighty God. And His arm is so big. It's Jesus Christ. He's able to pick us up no matter what. He's able to pick us all up at the same time. In Isaiah it says, Your name engraved in the palm of my hand. And Jesus said in the New Testament, He said, Lord, I have all of them in the palm of my hand. Every one You gave me, I still have them in the palm of my hand. He said, Lord, I am going to bring them all to heaven. I'm going to prepare a place at my table. See, Jesus Christ has a chair sitting at His table and He has a name tag on that place for you. And it's got your name on it. I'm telling you, He knows your name and He's making a place for you in His house. And that is not to be taken lightly. No matter what happens, that gets me through it. Isaiah says He is the arm of the Lord. When we shall see Him, no extraordinary beauty that we desire Him. In fact, He was despised and rejected of men. He was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. We hid our faces from Him. He was despised and we esteemed Him not. Let me tell you, kids, Kids, when Jesus hung on that cross, that, that cross over there is a little bigger than it really would have been. It wouldn't have been quite that big. But when he hung on that cross, he was totally bloody. He had cuts all over him. His beard pulled out. And it's just blood running down his face and his eyes. He was not pretty. And he's saying, Isaiah, did you know this was written about 700 years before it happened? That's a long time. 700 years ago, 13, 15. From Jesus' time, seven years, 700 years before that, Isaiah wrote these words. But why? Because God gave Isaiah a vision. God let Isaiah see the future. He let Isaiah look ahead in, in time 700 years and uh, he saw this and he saw that Jesus, it was no pretty sight. There wasn't anything pretty about him that people would be drawn to him. In fact, it was hideous. It was horrible. It was something you would 
turn your head from him. People made fun of him and said, you can't be God. If you're really God, you would come down off that cross. They would scream at him, you're not really the Son of God. If you are, then you have the power to come down off that cross. Instead of coming down off the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If you follow Jesus Christ, people sometimes are going to follow you and get to know Him too. If you follow Jesus Christ, people's going to want what you have. And they're going to get to know Jesus Christ too. I am excited about the supermoon blood moon. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Tonight? Is it about 9.30 our time? Is that right? Or something like that? You don't even have to stay up till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And it should be over in the eastern sky about so high. And it's a super moon because the moon's closer to the earth right now, so it's bigger. And it's going to be blood red. So we've got an eclipse. We've got a black moon, a super moon, a red moon, all happening at one time. And the last time this happened was 1982. So it has happened before. It's happened lots of times before throughout the centuries. But it's a pretty rare occasion. And, you know, 1982, it wasn't that long ago. That's when I graduated from high school. Just yesterday. Huh? All my troubles seem so far away. I get excited about... Can y'all tell? I get excited about things like this because I know that one day, and this might be it, I don't know, I sure would like for it to be, it's going to be, is it the 70th Jubilee, I believe? You talk about a perfect number. That's the 70th Jubilee, it's the Shemitah year where God starts everything all over. It's the fourth in the series of four. It's a super moon. It's a blood moon. And trumpets was last week. And Feast of Tabernacles is going on today. And I could just rapture out of here right now. But even if it doesn't happen, I'll have more faith in Him tomorrow if I wake up and go about my life and the rapture didn't happen. I'll have more faith in Him tomorrow than I did yesterday. And I'll have more faith in Him the next day, and the next day, and the next day, because He's going to use me until He's ready to call me home. God is not finished with you yet. He knew you'd be here today. He knows where you'll be tomorrow. And He's got a plan for you. How many? If you're uh, one of the kids that goes to children's church, raise your hand up real high. These kids... Boy, they, they're going to see a lot of changes in their life, aren't they? They're going to see a lot of changes. How many of you would have ever dreamed things would be like they are now? When we were that age? Or even when we were in high school? <laughs> I would have never dreamed there would be the technology there is. There's a lot of good things. The medical advancements, uh, a lot of great things. But there's also a lot of things that are not good, and I am just, I'm a little concerned for our kids. How about you? If you're concerned for our kids this morning, would you say amen? My grandkids, I hope and pray that God is so strong and that they trust the arm of the Lord so much that they'll never stray from His ways. He is the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. I'm going to close with this right here. It says over in chapter 10, Kids, I want you to say this after me, would you? It's talking about God 
when it says he, it's talking about God. When it says him, it's talking about Jesus. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Would you say that with me? It pleased the Lord to bruise him. One more time. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. I've always struggled with that verse because you know it had to be hard on God to watch his son being beaten and bruised. But on the other hand, because Jesus was willing to take it, because Jesus was willing to take it for the sacrifice so that you and I could have eternal life, God was pleased. It's not easy being a Christian, but it sure is worth it. The arm of the Lord is stretched out still. The arm of the Lord is reaching out to where you sit, even now. Want to touch your life. Make things right. Will you take his hand and go with him? Let's pray.